How many of you have had this happen? You're at your desk or you're in your house or whatever, and it's just kind of messy. You got junk on your desk. There's just things scattered around. Maybe you have been meaning to put a bunch of clothes away or fold stuff, make the bed, put some of these dishes away. Are you like me? I hit a breaking point. If there's too much stuff out, if it's too cluttered, if there's too many distractions, I will absolutely hit a breaking point and I can't function. Like I have to go wild. This happened yesterday, okay? Vacuum the whole house, change the air filter, moved boxes, like put the dishes away and like did that whole thing because it just had sort of hit that breaking point where I couldn't even sit back and game. Everything was just nagging at my attention and it was overwhelming. And it's kind of the best feeling ever. Once you like clean the whole space, you get the flow back. And then a week later, it's just back to the way it was. Isn't that how it goes? So whether it's work or life, or just the constant notifications coming from your phone, we get it every day. And sometimes it's too much to handle. So much so I think about this enough to where I've talked about it on the channel like three or four times, but I wanna give an update. I have made quite a few changes this year uh, to trying to be less overwhelmed. It hasn't always worked, but I wanna at least talk about a few things that have. We are constantly connected now, and unless you very intentionally remove yourself from social media, email, text, news alerts, uh, you're gonna be pulled in a bunch of different ways. And it's not just even your phone. Go boot up your PlayStation 5 or your Xbox or whatever. Oh, look at that. The whole home screen is just full of things now to pull away your attention. According to a study from the American Psychological Association, nearly 75% of adults report feeling stressed and overwhelmed by the constant bombardment of notifications and multitasking. Well, here's the thing. Our brains are not built to handle that much information all at once. And this constant mental overload creates something called cognitive fatigue. Basically, it drains our mental resources and makes it harder to focus, make decisions, and even remember things. Like, how silly is that? Our brains are legit like a computer. You just open like 50 tabs on your browser, and all of a sudden, you're starting to run a lot slower than you should. By the way, man. If you're ever on like a work Zoom and somebody shares their screen, they've got like 40 tabs up. I literally get anxiety just by looking at that. So I realized uh, this year, these notifications aren't good for us. These distractions are pretty stupid. And the fact that they're now in every aspect of our life, I don't want to feel overwhelmed all the time. This year, I have moved away from listening to music on a smartphone and I found an old iPod. And I threw in some money and bought a flash mod and a new battery. And I've been toying with this thing all year long, but I've now got it in a pretty good spot where I literally listen to music on a device that can't talk to the internet. And it is the best thing ever. I found my old point and shoot cyber shot camera and I take it with me and I try and shoot photos with that instead of pulling out my phone to take pictures. And I also have started to play my 3DS more often. You know what's nice about these three devices? They don't have distractions. They do the one thing that they do. It's really nice to go take a photo and not accidentally see a work notification or an email or some stupid thing from social media. All of a sudden, it's like closing 10 of those browser tabs and I can enjoy what I'm doing. With the iPod, it's just about music. Music I own, music that I have ripped to this thing in the highest quality possible. Literally finding my old physical CDs, ripping them in uncompressed format and putting them on the iPod. Because there's so much joy there. Like there's this attachment that occurs. And the 3DS has just been awesome. I'll do a full video deep diving on this thing, but you can play the whole DS game library on this, the 3DS library, Game Boy Advance games. Like, this has been so rad if I just need 30 or 40 minutes of gaming. I, I love the Switch. It's cool. And I wish I had a Steam Deck. I've heard they're incredible. But there's something so nice about having this thing, which really doesn't spam me 
with advertisements for new or different games. It just feels like something from a bygone era. When we're overwhelmed, it doesn't just impact our mood, it impacts our ability to function. Studies show that when our brain is overloaded, it becomes harder to regulate your emotions, leading to irritability, anxiety, and burnout. All three that I go through on a weekly basis, <laughs> this is known as decision fatigue. Basically, when you're faced with too many choices throughout the day, your brain gets tired. And by the end of the day, you're more likely to make poor decisions, whether that's eating junk food, skipping your workout, or procrastinating. Overwhelmed can also mess with your sleep. Research from Harvard shows that when we're constantly overstimulated, especially by screens, it disrupts our natural circadian rhythms, which impacts your sleep further, which just all compounds on itself. I brought this up uh, about a month ago. I had the dumbest crash ever on my mountain bike, a trail I've ridden like literally hundreds of times. A bug flew down my shirt. I took my hand off the handlebar to smack it, and I just went over the bars and dislocated my shoulder, and it was, it was the dumbest crash ever, but I'm almost positive it's because of lack of sleep, which has led to worse decision-making and kind of feeling overwhelmed, having this decision fatigue, basically. This can even impact things like your hobbies, gaming in particular. If you're coming home from work or school and you've been totally overwhelmed that day and tired, maybe it's your backlog that's stressing you out. You got excited, you've bought all these games, you want to put time in, you can't decide what you're going to play. I mean, that... That's a problem everybody deals with. You can just look at your Steam library for an hour and then pull up Netflix and just watch the same show over and over again. If you're on the live service multiplayer side, developers have tuned it into this well-oiled machine built to give you FOMO for not keeping up with your dailies or the progression or the gear score. So I, I think one of the big ways I've been dealing with that this year is just prioritizing games that I want to play if they're bringing me fun. Um, not worrying about the backlog guilt, but also picking just one or two games that I know I want to beat and pushing through them. It's okay to, to drop games that aren't sparking joy for you anymore. All right, so here's a few ideas on how to manage overwhelm. Limit your multitasking. Studies have shown that multitasking is a myth. Our brains can only focus on one thing at a time. When we try to juggle multiple tasks, we're actually switching between them rapidly, which increases cognitive load and makes us less productive. Focus on one task at a time, whether it's work or gaming, life, relationships, enjoying downtime, you'll find it way easier to get things done and feel less scattered. If you ever watched a show while scrolling something on your phone, like Twitter or Instagram, TikTok, whatever, I call this like brain rot time, where you're kind of half watching the show, half scrolling your feed. Yeah, there's there's a part of it that's like really enjoyable. But then you get like an hour into it and you feel kind of awful. <laughs> I feel like this modern world, it's got us all just straight up overwhelmed. And it's no wonder people are having a harder time picking the things that they want to do. I mean, my most viewed video this year is me talking about why it's so hard to pick a game right now. The second tip I have goes along with the first, and that's creating digital boundaries. I think it's maybe one of the best things I did this year. I know it's not practical for everyone to ditch their smartphone, and I'm not ditching it. I, I need it for a lot of work stuff. But try setting some boundaries. Not just the ones where you're like, oh, I'll look at my phone less. I don't, I don't know. Maybe you're really self-disciplined, but for me, that doesn't work. I have focus modes set up that turn off notifications during certain hours. I don't want to see work emails between like 5 p.m. and 8 a.m. the next day. Sometimes I have to hop in there and look. Sometimes there's exceptions to that. But wow, not having to look at that stuff accidentally in the middle of the night? Oh, it's been a straight up game changer. I wish I, wish I would have done that sooner. Practice mindfulness and taking breaks. A lot of research supports the idea that taking short breaks throughout the day can improve focus and reduce overwhelm. It's almost like we have it all figured out for kids, but then we just ditch it as soon as we all get into the real world. Like as a kid, you got recess, you got outdoor time, you got physical activity, and then you get into the real working world, and it's like continual interruptions from Slack, 
and Zoom and email, and you're lucky if you can get outside at lunch for like 30, 40 minutes, right? Oh, man. Whether I'm, I'm working or playing a game, I'm trying harder to just focus on that one thing. I'm trying not to do the brain rot thing. If I'm watching a TV show, I should just watch the TV show, put the phone down, and avoid distractions. And if you can throughout the day, take a five-minute break. I love the Pomodoro method. Check it out online. I think it's great. Cal Newport's book, Deep Work, is freaking awesome. Very recommended. Break things into smaller steps. Overwhelm can often come from a feeling like there's too much uh, to do and having to do it all at once can be a lot. Breaking things down into smaller manageable steps is simple, but it's also a very effective way to tackle that emotion. Whether it's knocking out um, like one game at a time or if it's just one level of a game at a time or just focusing on one element of a task at work, the smaller wins help build the momentum towards the big win. And I use an app called Todoist on my phone and it's just a simple checklist app because there's so many things that pop into my head that day where it's like, okay, pay this bill, um, capture this footage, talk to this person, whatever. And I don't want to hold that in my brain. Anytime it's like, oh, I need to remember to tell this person something, ta-da, you just opened up another one of those browsers on, uh, or another tab within your browser. Wow, I'm tired. <laughs> and it's not easy to remember that stuff. Write it down, get it out of your head. And so that goes along with my final tip here, reduce your options. We live in a time of endless choice and sometimes that's overwhelming in and of itself. Studies show that having too many of those options can actually lead you to analysis paralysis and thus leading us to more decision fatigue. If you can cut down some of the options, whether, like I said, just sticking to a few games or a device like the 3DS or using a simpler device like a point and shoot or an iPod, those things can help reduce distractions and reduce mental load. At the end of the day, it is okay to let go of the things that aren't adding value to your life, whether it's the game you're not enjoying, the task that's overwhelming you, the pressure to be connected all the time, and to prioritize your well-being. I don't have it figured out. I still get really frustrated every other week. I'm trying hard to set those boundaries, but Work just pushes back. There's more interruptions, more notifications, more urgency. I just, I'm learning some things this year, but this is a journey I need more tips and help on. So if overwhelm is something that you deal with, I would love to hear any tips and ideas that you have. I want to thank you for watching. Thanks for the support on the channel this year. I really think this modern world, we've got to be on this sort of turning point where everybody's going to be on the same wavelength here that the constant noise can't be good for us. Thanks again for watching. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you again very soon.